Yeah, I was disappointed. We had a couple good drives in there, and you got to maintain. You can't stop yourselves. We had some penalties. We had some drop balls. We had uh, a couple missed assignments and a couple all those things, and that's how you lose a football game. That's Coach Mike Shanahan after last night's 24-17 loss to the Giants. That puts the Redskins at 3-9 and nine for the year. We are joined now by Trevor Maddich, who's going to try to help us make sense of all this. You know, Trevor, the difference between last night's game is it started out pretty strong for the Redskins. I mean, when you look back over the season, they start slow, but then they finish strong and almost come back. This time they started strong, and then they just faded. I was completely freaked out by the first two series in this game. The Redskins offensively, first series, scored a touchdown for the first time the entire year on their first series. And then the defense went on the field, and their first series, they forced a three and out and a punt. And I was astonished that that happened. So you're right. They started fast. But what happened was after a good first half or most of the first half, in the second half, the Giants took over and the Redskins disappeared. So what, what happened at halftime? Well, a couple things happened. One of them was that the receivers all of a sudden got butter all over their hands. And whereas they were making catches in the first half to extend drives, in the second half they dropped ball after ball after ball. Now, RG3 missed some reads, and he missed some opportunities. But he still hit guys in the hands, and they dropped it. Another problem was they had missed assignments. They had penalties. They just did all the little things that make you punt instead of extending drives, the problems that they've had when the offense has sputtered at times during the course of this season. So it was, it was a great first half, and then the second half they just took turns messing up, led by the receivers who failed RG3 miserably in this game. Well, and Trevor managed to, in that last drive there when RG3 was uh, trying to tie the game up in the final seconds, there was a play there that, uh, according to Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth, and they were talking about it, uh, it should allow most Redskins fans to feel, feel pretty bitter today. What, what can you, what sh- can you uh, shed some light on this? Well, where it looked like they got a first down, and they changed the yard markers to a first down, but then the ref said, no, 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 you don't have a first down. Yeah, on a second down, they, they got the ball up near the first down and what happened was the officials on the field said they were short and called it a third down but the guys with the chains on the sideline moved it forward as if it were a first down and and Mike Shanahan says that one of the officials told him it was a first down and he asked for Shanahan did a measurement because he thought it was close and the official told him according to Shanahan that it wasn't necessary because it was a first down. Right, so then they do a typical first down play, like a 20-yard pass. Yeah, they threw it down the field incomplete. Now all of a sudden it's fourth down. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. You know, that's not what we, what we would have called. Now, it didn't turn out to, well, who knows what would have happened there because on that fourth down play, RG3 completed the ball to Garcon, who then had it stripped away from him. And that and, was the end of the game. Yeah, and you can make the case that, well, gee, they had the opportunity, but you can also make the case that neither one of those two plays would have been called had the officials gotten it right on the field in the yeah. first place. So, so yeah, the Redskins fans do have a, have a reason to be bitter at that, uh, but that's not the only reason they lost. All right, so we're 3-9 we're and nine on the season. It, Mathematically it, eliminated, uh, we're out of the playoffs. The question is, what happens now? I mean, you've got to play the rest of the games, and you've got to show up, and you've got to do your best. But, I mean, really, what, what, do we, what do we salvage from the rest of this season? Nothing. You know, the only thing that you can really salvage from the rest of the season. Now, that's depressing. Yeah, well, it is depressing. You're totally right. Because after last season, you would think that if the defense, and we've talked about this, if they improved from heinous to merely awful, <laughs> with the way the offense was looking last year, you'd think it would only progress this year, that the Redskins had a really good chance of winning the division again this year. Well, the defense regressed from heinous to pathetic, and the offense, while they piled up a lot of yards, aren't finishing drives. So they're, they're one of the highest in the league in terms of yards gained, one of the worst in the league in terms of the ratio of points scored to yards gained. And so everything regressed this year. There's only one thing you can really look at going forward now in these last few games, and that is how will RG3 progress? People talk about putting Kirk Cousins in there and letting RG3 rest and all that stuff. Can't do that. RG3 has to play his way through this. He's got to progress, and then he's got to get better next year. And how he improves as a pocket passer over the last several games 
will be something that fans will be able to watch. And frankly, he did improve as a pocket passer in this game. Unfortunately, the receivers dropped too many of them right. in the second half. All right, but I mean, I saw Daniel Snyder on TV. He didn't look too happy. No. So what yeah. happens to the Shanahan's? Yeah, the 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 the, the Snyder cam was on him a lot. Hey, if you're saying they regressed, how is that not an indictment of of the coach? Well, it can be. You know, it can it can be, and really, it should be. But at the same time, you've got a problem now with people that want to replace the coach. In that, for the last 15 years, the Redskins have tried the old swap the coach out as soon as things look bad. And they've always had to replace now new systems, new coaches, new expectations, a lot of new players, all those things, and start over. Right now, they could do that with Shanahan. They could, uh, they could get rid of him and start over again. Or... They can go with the continuity card. Trevor, when you bring in the right coach, but would, I'd go with the continuity. Oh, tell that to the Kansas City Chiefs this year. They brought in a new coach, and look what happened. They didn't have to take a lot of time to, to get a new system in. You can say, say listen, we, if we bring in the right coach with the last name of Harbaugh, we should be fine. Sure, and who's that guy? <laughs> well, they've tried that over and over and over and over, Bill and, over and over and over again. Bill Cowher. And yeah, and, and the, well, no, Cowher's not coming to the Redskins uh, unless he wants a paycheck. Um, <laughs> you know, and that's part of the problem right now. The Redskins are seen by coaching candidates as either a place you go to get a paycheck as a coach yeah. or a place you go because you couldn't get a job anywhere else. All One right. of the two. Let's, wow. let's leave this on a positive note. I mean, is, is, it, is that possible? Yes, because I'm going to shift from the Redskins. I hate to do this to you, Trevor, but yeah, you have to have an opinion on the end of that of the Iron Bowl, oh, the Auburn-Alabama game. We were talking about it all morning. People are still people are going to be talking about this for years. The, with no time left, the return, a 109-yard return of a missed field goal. Have you ever seen anything like this, especially in a game with the kind of stakes that were uh, 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 hanging in the in the air? This may be the greatest finish to a college football game in history. Think about it. First of all, the nature of the play was incredible. It was a 56-yard field goal, I think, to try to win it for Alabama to continue their hopes to win a third consecutive national championship. It was caught in the end zone because it was short by a returner for Auburn and then returned 109 yards for the game-winning touchdown on the last play of the regular season, a walk-off that ended the hopes for destiny and history for Alabama and walked Auburn into the SEC championship game on the last play of the last game of the regular season. And when you think about that, the walk-off nature of it and the crazy nature of it, this, it it'll, be, well, it'll go down in history as one and, of the greatest, if not the greatest play. And add to that that these two teams are bitter rivals oh, yeah. within the same state, that this is always the biggest game of the season anyway, and so put all of that on top of it. It was panned Ammonium down in Alabama. And the thing is, this will be held over Alabama's head for generations. Oh, it couldn't have happened to a nicer team. Generations. <laughs> Auburn fans will they'll say, kick Bama, kick, because of the decision to get that right, field goal. Exactly. All oh, right. It, it, Thanks, and, Trevor. Oh, it'll be great. All right, Trevor, thank you so much. Good to have you.